So, I'm, uh, I'm starting this video today with a bit of a disclaimer. Since the last video I done, which was like a small little introduction on how UV unwrapping in Blender can be a pain in the ass, but a necessary one, um, I said I was going to get on to doing some texture atlas work. I'm just showing a couple of techniques about how to get the most out of your chosen textures, because you might have the greatest model in the world, but if your textures aren't good, your model's not going to look good. So I took a bit of a break since that video. I left the house for a change, uh, much needed, but upon coming back and getting ready to get back into these videos, I had actually lost that texture that I was working with, that I had so much ideas to show you. I don't know where it's gone to. I've been crazy busy with work, so I think maybe files had gotten uh, kind of cross-contaminated and I might have accidentally deleted it. So I'm working here, as you can see, on a very crude screenshot, very low res, but it should be enough to explain what I want to explain to you here. The last time we looked at this, we we mapped out our segment. So this is a roof segment that you're seeing. Ignore this cursor thing. It's bugging me since I'm looking at it. That's not actually my cursor here. I'm using a stylus at the moment. I cannot get rid of that for now, but just ignore it. Um, so that was our roof segment, and I put these these textures here as a very fast example of what we're going to be doing, and we focused on this guy. So this entire piece was mapped out as far as I can remember. I think we went something like uh, something like that. I think we had maybe. Was it six squares or was it eight? I can't remember exactly. But we focused on just cutting this fella into each one of these and making them seem seamless. Like So it's, it's kind of tied up here and here. So we get this result. I probably should have made a layer. Uh, we would have got this like uh, seal, seamless result from it. Now again, because the textures or the image is very, very low res, you can probably make it out. It, it is seamless. But um, the problem that I had with it was it, it's, it just looks too small. Like the... Uh, hang on a second. Let me let me make a layer and try to visually explain myself. This here is the entire image. This is a 1K image that squares up into a corner of a 1K image. So it's really compressing down the quality of what we have here. And on top of that, it's making it look very condensed on the model. Like if we had um, a standard wall, say, where this connects up here, we had just a brick texture down here, maybe. These tiles would look like they're only a quarter of the size in real life. Or it'll just make the, the roof segment itself look monstrously big. So what we would kind of want to, to do with this would be, we we'll keep the same texture, but we kind of want it to only use maybe a quarter. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe use a quarter of what we have and get rid of that. When I say get rid of that, what I mean is I'll actually scale this piece out to meet up in this edge here. So we have a much larger set of tiles. But the, the problem with doing that with a seamless texture is you lose that seamless. Okay, so as well, another thing you might notice, I'm on a different setup at the moment, so my interface and sound might be a little different too. Just bear that in mind. So what this video is going to be, it's going to hopefully be a quick one. Um, before we get into the main cuts of the video, which probably be the next video actually, which is setting up these uh, seamless textures and making a usable atlas like this, I want to show you how to offset images that are like this. We want to use, again, only a small portion of this image, but we still want it to be seamless. But by cutting out all this extra work, we're going to lose that seamless uh, tile, basically. So how do we get that back? We're going to have to... It's going to get complicated. I'm sorry, there's no way around it. We're going to have to put this one into quarters. And then we just kind of shift this segment to here so that what was here will be down here. It's really confusing, so I'm just going to jump in 
get this texture and I'm going to show you exactly how to cut this one up and I, ho I hope I hope it's easy, easier to follow. So to do this I'm using a software here, it's called Krita or Krita, I'm not too sure how it's pronounced to be honest. This is a free to get software, I'd recommend it for anybody who doesn't have Photoshop, it's a great alternative to using Photoshop. I have both, I just prefer using this to be honest, I think it's, it's less um, it's easier to use. The tools in it are a lot more straightforward, I find. Um, to get this, what you want to do is you want to go to their website, which is open here to my left, I think. Uh, yeah, here we go. This one, Krita or Krita.org. And you just want to grab it here. So you get Krita now, and whatever your platform you're on, grab that. Just download this and install it. Again, it's a free download. You don't have to worry about uh, costs on this one. So let me just get this out of the way. Once you have that installed and opened, it should look pretty similar to what I have here. Just so that we're going through it together, I'm going to go back to the home screen, so I'll close this. It'll show my recent documents, which I just opened there, so ignore that. So when you open Creedy, this is what you should see. Okay, so we're going to load our textures into this. And again, like using the way, the way Photoshop uses layers and folders, we're going to basically do the same thing in this. It's very similar, so like for anyone who has used Photoshop, don't feel like it's going to be a new learning curve. It's actually kind of the same. You use the same blending layer styles and all, all sorts. So to do that, obviously we're going to need to get our textures. And for that, I have two websites here I'm going to recommend. The first one is this guy. Everybody knows about this one. Textures.com. Um, just type that into your search bar and you get this. I have an account here. Uh, you want to sign up for an account it's free to sign up and you get 15 downloads a day that resets at midnight every day so every day you come back you get 15 more textures that you want and you don't even need to, to pay a cent for it you can get a premium membership but i don't bother i've been using this for nearly 10 years now and i haven't paid a cent to it it's a brilliant website though it's fantastic so um yeah so when you go on this website this is what you're going to see so we're looking for textures, we're just going to go to browse library here. And you can see it has loads and loads of content, not just PBR materials, it actually has meshes and scan data and all sorts of great stuff. Most of that is unfortunately hidden, you need premium membership to get a lot of the really really juicy stuff there, but I think the likes of reference images and textures themselves are, I think you get up to 1k resolution for free without a premium membership. 1K is fine. It's okay for what we're doing. If you're getting serious about it, what you could actually do is there's alternatives for um, like upscaling images. There's websites and all that does it. So that's what I would do personally. Um, for this, we're going to be looking at here, right here, PBR materials. And we go PBR because it's a PBR workflow we're going for. And it also gives you all the maps you're going to need. So here's your categories. You've got brick walls, you've got raw concrete, you know, like uh, damaged concrete, that's a pretty nice one. You've got different fabrics, great if you're doing character work, which I do a lot as well. Um, marbles, beautiful. They're like really, really nice materials. So for our example, I'm gonna try find that exact uh, texture we used, which was roofing. And here you see all the different types of roof you have available to us. I think the one I was using was possibly this guy here. Yeah, old square roof tiles too. So if you want to follow along with this, grab this guy, just click on that image. And here you'll see all the maps we have. And each one of these maps that we download will cost us one credit. Again, we have 15 free credits on this every day up until midnight where it resets back to 15. So. I will actually, um, I got my folder here, I will show you quickly, these are a couple that I have downloaded, these are just the names of them, I'll actually link the URLs to get these easier in the uh, information section of the video, so you can come in and grab the exact same ones that I have and follow along exactly as I'm doing it if that's what you wish. If not, grab the materials that you, you prefer yourself. There's some nice ones here, so I recommend have a look. So, the important bits to note is for each material, we're going to need four maps. 
Okay, we're, we're going to need, you can see here, by the way, I've already purchased them. So once you spend a credit on a material or a texture, you don't have to spend it anymore. You can come back in and download it again as many times as you want. It'll always show as a purchase for you. So I'm going to quickly just grab the color map here, the albedo. So I'll take the highest one available to me. It's the uh, 1K. Height, I'm not that worried about. Um, if I was going more into like production, I probably would get a height map. But then again, for such low poly, it's kind of waste. But that can be used as a layer in Krita to actually add detail using like multiple eye channels and all. But for the moment, we won't we won't worry about that. Grab the albedo, the normal. I'll take that. You want the roughness, and grab the ambient occlusion. These are also very nice to have on the side. Just if you want to overlay it onto your color map, it gives you a nice bit of extra dank. Like everything kind of looks older. If it's like an old setting you're going for, ambient occlusion maps actually look very nice on uh, on Blender models. So we'll grab that as well. So with our maps all gathered and downloaded, we want to go back into Krita here. And we're going to set up a new, a new texture atlas file. And that file is going to hold all our folders with our images. It's going to be layered so that we can basically make all the types of map we need in, in the atlas without jumping between files or different documents and stuff. So we're just going to go on the start here. By the way, for people who use this software, apologies, but I'm going to be going through this if you don't. So I'll literally be just pointing at everything and explaining what it is that we need anyway. It's not going to be a tutorial on the interface or anything like that, but it's for everything, every tool we're going to use, I'll go into a very specific detail with it. So I just want to go to new file and in presets or predefined here, this should have texture sizes for us. So here we can see the textures. We'll make this, um, should we go 4K? Then again, with 1K res. Let's try a 4K texture just to see. If I bring a 1K into this, actually you might not need to resize it then because we aim to get four images per texture at 1K, so that should be okay. But we'll go with this, we'll go with 4K and click create. So there's our document. For navigation on this, if you want to just understand quickly what I'm doing here, the, if you click and hold the middle mouse button, you can pan your image around and zoom using the scroll wheel itself. So once we have this white square here, I'll just remove the background. We don't, we tend not to need it. It's locked until you click this padlock icon here. Let's get rid of that. And then we'll use this paint layer and we'll just fill it with black. So if you don't have this, actually, I should probably explain that. The top corner here, if you don't have this or you have swatches, you want to make sure that your uh, advanced color selector is open there. I think that should be in window uh, workspace. I actually don't remember what workspace I'm using. Um, I think I'm just on. Uh, is there standard? No. I don't think I changed this. Default. Here we go. Yeah, so that should be your default workspace. If you just go to window, uh, click default there, you should be seeing what I'm seeing here. If not, just. Play around with the workspace and just see until you get this this uh, color picker here. So I was going to choose black on the color picker and I'll go to my fill tool and I'll just scrub that. So that's going to be our base layer of this and I'm going to start bringing my images in and resizing them. But to do that I need to set up the guides because I want this, again like the, the tree models themselves, you want your textures to snap, you want them to snap to your center points. So to do that I need to go to view. And I want to turn on show rulers, which is on here, but okay. Make sure that's checked on. And then you can see your rulers on top and side. And then similar to Photoshop, if you just hover over this ruler and click and drag, it pulls out. Now, I hope the resolution is okay to see this. I hope you see that line that's been following my, uh, my cursor. You'll know as well, as soon as I get close to the center of this image, it'll snap into place. You'll, you'll see it visibly snap. There we go. 
And if you don't see a visibly snap and you're confused about it, if you duplicate your paint layer and you select your uh, transform tool, which is just this little guy here, you then see the middle point of your image and you just want to basically line your guides up to this little crosshair here in the center. So I pull down my top bar, my top guide, I'll bring one in from the side here as well and I want to snap it just there to that center point. Now I can get rid of that extra layer. So that's our guide setup. And when we bring an image into this and we scale on it, the image will snap to those guides too. So we, we can be sure we're going to get four perfect tileable textures onto this now because it's going to snap to those guides. But there's the problem now, that tileable texture that I just mentioned. We need to make that tileable texture untileable so we can make it tileable again. And that's where I'm kind of, I'm not too sure how I'm going to explain this, it's very confusing, I know it is. I'll just get the texture in and just paste it on here and see. So I'll go to my downloads, which is open somewhere. Um, there we go. I'm just going to click and drag these maps in one by one. Okay, so I'm going to start by bringing in the color map here. I'll just drop that in, insert as a new layer. And now you can see, because this is a 1K image and we set it up a 4K, it's, it's already kind of cut to what we want, which is perfect. So I'll bring, I'll do that for the, the rest of them. I'll bring in my normal map, do the same, click and drag, insert as a new layer. I'll bring in the roughness, insert as a new layer. And I'll bring in also the ambient occlusion because I want to kind of show what that can do as well. And there we go. So now we got our four maps here. That's our, that's our background, we can ignore that. For the sake of keeping this organized, I want to add these all into folder. And then when I manipulate one image, it'll manipulate the entire folder. So I don't have to do it to each image one by one. Before I do that, I want there to be a hierarchy because I'm going to be doing this with every texture I bring in. And it'll make turning the color maps off easier if they're kind of they're following the same hierarchy, you know? So just before I set a folder up, I want to do this in order. So I want the color map to be top. You can see when I'm dragging this, a blue bar will appear between the icons. So that means I'm basically putting it in between. I'm reordering it that way. So I'll start with a color map. I'll select the normal then and I'll bring that up underneath the color. And I'll go roughness then. So roughness and then ambient occlusion is the bottom. And with the hierarchy there, I want to select each of these, hold down the shift or the control key and select all of them. And then with this little plus sign here, I want to open that, I want to say quick group or add group. Layer. That's new. That would normally do it for me. Okay. I'll just manually add them in then, select each of them and I'll drag this into group two. I don't know why it completely leaves our group one, um, but with that, I'm going to rename this one Groove Products. Simple enough. So now when I grab this folder, everything is moving, not just one layer. All these layers are coming with it. And similar to the last video as well, I'll probably set this up here, keep an order to it. But before I do that, I want to show you the problem with the tiling that we have. Okay, so if I was... I need to lock these guides in place actually to do that because you can see if I'm trying to extend these it's going to be moving the guides on me instead which I don't want so with that I'll go to view and lock guides just turn that on so now I can grab this folder and I can stretch this out so that it fills up this texture completely and you notice as well as I'm doing that again it looks it's gonna it's gonna look to snap to the corner of the document so it's not there and there so that's completely flush now I'll just press enter and I'm only you don't actually have to do this this is only me trying to show you what the problem that we have is okay now in Crida there's a way to check the seamlessness of an image it's this little icon here 
if I click that on, you can then see this is how the image will look. Now there's still highlight points on the texture that's kind of going to stand out to the eye, but as far as the texture goes, if I just turn these guides off here, go view, and turn off show guides. Now it's kind of hard or impossible to figure out how these textures are broken up because you don't see the scene lines. That's how you know it's a perfect tileable texture. I can turn that off. What I can see here, that's where the scene should show up, but it's not. It's completely flawless. But here's the problem. This image is the image that we used before. So if I was to use this again, these are going to end up looking too small. Let me add another layer so I can draw on this. So the problem I was having was that these individual, let me just scale my pen up here, these individual tiles, as we were using them, were way too small on the atlas that it just it didn't look right. So I need again, like I said at the start, I want to divide this up so that we're only going to be using something that I can't draw on for some reason. We're only going to be using a quarter of this. But if I was to do that, if I select this, let's say I'll take I need my guides back for this, I'll go image, view, show guides. I'm only going to take this section here. Right, so now my selection is going to snap to that guide in the center. And if I come up to select and invert selection, I can go I can go through each one of these and just clicking on the image then with the selection inverted and I can delete each of these because we only want to keep a quarter of this. So there's our roof tile. Now we only want this to be the usable image, but again, we want it to tile. And as it is, it's not going to do that because we've just cut half it off. So we need to extend this out. So to do that, I kind of probably should explain what the science is. So we need this to offset basically. So I'm going to just grab the folder and scale this up. So I want to fill the image. Okay, so that's the, the size that we're looking for. The problem is again, it's still not, it's not as bad, but you can definitely see the tile. You can see where those seams are creeping in that we need to fix up, especially like, especially down like so here, you kind of got the tiles meeting in three places. And you, yeah, you can see the, the tileable there. As I'm drawing, it actually tiles across as well. So we need to fix this up. And to do that, we need to offset this so that here is going to be the start of our image. And then the bottom of the image comes off screen altogether. So say there's the corner of our image. We're bringing the, the center of it so that the bottom is going to end here. I know it's confusing, so I'm just going to show. Uh, hopefully you can follow. I was dreading making this video. Okay, so the tools we need to do this, I'll select the, or the folder, top of the folder here, and we need to use this tool. A lot of people have made this problem before where they go to the transform there, and then they try offset their image down, and then they wonder why it's not tiling, because you're not, you're, you're, the canvas is staying where it is, it's only the layer you're removing. It works differently, it's hard to explain it again. So just know that if something doesn't look right, chances are it's because you use the transform tool. You want to move tool for this. So I will grab the folder and I'll just move this down so that it lines up here in the center. And again, I'm going to use the mouse wheel and just scroll right in on this. And I just want to make sure that that green line is snapping to the grids. So you're not going to get much better than that. So with that, you can see the green outline is the actual bounds of the image. If I turn on tile, it might take a second. Yep, 
it sometimes needs a refresh. Okay, so I've done a little digging and figured out that the problem that I, would, I had just there was um, in newer versions of Crytek for some reason, it seems to have, using the wraparound tool here, it seems to have some problems with um, folders for some reason. So I think just as a temporary workaround for that, I'm just going to remove this folder. I'll just drag these files out of here. I'll just bring it above until I see that blue line and there's my folder here. I'll just remove that. So if I wrap around, I have the image. It's working fine. I'll just try select each of them and I'll go into wrap around again. And I'll go to my move tool and I'm just going to drag this down so that the green box is on the bottom of those guides. I hope you can see that in the center. Let me just zoom in on it. Okay, so it's very laggy. It's still a bit buggy, obviously. Um, if it works, it's a great tool. But whether it works or not seems to seems to be a uh, hit or miss. Well, that seems to work. I'm just looking at the details in the image here, like this split in the tile. Is that consistent with them all? Yeah. Okay, it looked like that worked. So, I won't bother adding this to a folder. I'm just going to do the fix up here, and then I'm going to export this and replace it. Replace the old file we downloaded with this one. So then with that done, if I turn off these uh, the guides here, I'll just turn off show guides. Now you can see it's very obvious. These lines here that need to be, um, they need to be kind of blurred in a way. Yeah, so it's very obvious there, you know, like this line here. You can see those seams stand out a mile away. Here as well. So how do we minimize that now? So we can use this texture again as a tiling texture. Well, we need to clone areas of the, the image and then just kind of paint over them. It was much more prevalent in, in this color map. It's not as bad in the likes of um, the normal map. So if you, as you see there, it's hard to tell the seams here at all. Like here, maybe, but that's zoomed right in. You're not going to see that as far as been applied on the texture or on, onto a model goes and uh, maybe the ambient occlusion might be important we might need to have a look at that up there um i accidentally drew on that layer i could fix that though yeah roughness map might need a little touch up the likes are here that's going to run on straight across there again roughness is not that big a deal but a fix won't be hard a little bit of a bend in the tile there but other than that um that should be tiling pretty flawlessly now as well and we'll just get to fixing this now we'll start with the color map 